good, gang? Welcome to the grind. The toy grind. You join me in the year of our Lord 2023, which will forever be remembered in these circles as the year of the release of the Rise of the Beasts of the... Which we can mostly agree was a solid enough silly robot romp with big screen debuts for several maximal faves, including breakout ape daddy Optimus Primal. But did you know he wasn't always a gorilla? Did you know he was originally a bat? For a bit. And did you know Purple Dino Megatron used to be a crocodile for a while? Did you know? Yeah, you probably did. Everybody does. But I'm gonna talk about it anyway, cause it's my turn. They're brilliant. And so are their seven mates. Let's flip the script with the Beast Wars basics. But first, this video is what? Sponsored by Magic Spoon! Now, if you're anything like me, an overgrown child forced to live as an adult, you probably still enjoy delicious flavoured cereal, but secretly wish it was more compatible with a low-carb lifestyle. Well, good news, you can have it both ways, with tasty, high-quality cereals from Magic Spoon. Each serving of delicious Magic Spoon cereal has about 5 grams net carbs and 14 grams of protein, and I like those numbers. Plus, they taste banging. I'm into the frosted ones myself, but there's loads of others to try. Fruity. Peanut butter, cocoa, see how you feel. <sighs> Look man, you know how it is, I'm a growing bloke. I'm getting more and more conscious of my body's needs, but my brain demands flavour. So Magic Spoon is a banging brekkie for me. I can have a good bowl of tasty chalky hoops and be smug in the knowledge that I'm getting the good stuff and no sugar. It's high protein, keto friendly, naturally flavoured, free of soy, wheat and gluten, none of that. So check it out. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and get a fiver off with the checkout promo code Toy grind, or go to magicspoon.com slash toygrind and get $5 off any order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll give you a refund. No questions asked, never you mind. So scan the QR code, click the link below, or use the checkout code toygrind to get five bucks off today. Magic Spoon! So these nine dudes, just the nine today, is it? All right. Yes, indeed. This natty nunette of bestial basic bitches was one of the earliest occurrences of the whole Beast era. A creative little critter cluster centered around a shared flip-out functionality that instantly switches them from borderline believable baby beasts to wacky 90s cartoon robots. And with hindsight, they really come off like a proof of concept for the whole Beast Wars idea. Like, you can visualize the pitch meeting, right? G2's not working, nothing's hitting, we need something new, so, how about this? What if Transformers was fast, fun, flip-change animal creatures now? Who would have thought that'd be the move that saved the entire brand? Because it kind of was. And this micro-menagerie was the smaller scale selection of the first year fauna, sharing roughly the same core design, fantastically poseable, ball-jointed skinny limbs, and an irresistibly addictive single-step transformation which usually ends with the robot tum formed from the animal's face or anus. And they really went off showcasing the versatility of this baseline template, banging out mammals, reptiles, rodents, and flyers with distinct vibes and powerful personalities. And we'll dig in, why not, with Optimus Primal's aforementioned early doors Batsona from before he was cemented as the striking silverback that still endures to this day. So get a load of this flamboyant flyboy, flaunting blatantly borrowed superhero stylings and looking hauntingly humanoid with his toned musculature and crime-fighting face mask. Like, there's no escaping it, he looks like a man in a bat-themed costume. Almost like some manner of bat-male, bat-fella, mm. Can't quite place it. Look at this, he's even got hidden gadgets in his comically stiff space hogging cape. And this is gonna be a theme, because one thing this gang all blanketly nail is the art of next level weapon storage. Some of these are so slick I didn't even realize I had them. But yeah, these six secret scimitars stash away so perfectly as to be basically imperceptible. If you didn't know it was there, I couldn't help you. Now, the flip formation on this fool is slightly more involved than the others. Like the tail locks up in an unusual way. And I think he's the only one who's got these like lateral shoulder swings so good job we're doing him first it does feel a smidge insecure around the undercarriage same like the limbs don't really lock up or come to rest anywhere and annoyingly the bat mode itself isn't especially good really like most of the animal is just one big flat piece the wings don't flap or anything which i you know it's 1996 we can you know but still the feeble jibber jaw here seems to live by its own rules and i don't think it has feet if you just bang the arms down does that count 
as a creature having feet. It doesn't seem to. It doesn't seem intentional. But you know, it works. It's fun in and of itself as a bat that's a transformer that's not like robot style. Love the piggy snout face and the massive ears. Definitely dig the cheeky Tim Burton bat signal silhouette. And the fur texture's kind of good, but ultimately it is a bit of a weaky. It's an exciting start with a weird ending. Monthly Megatron. May not actually be monthly. Mercifully then, Megatron serves as a very different bucket of maggots in this righteous reptilian fit from his old school unsigned Crocstar days. Doesn't it just blast classic cartoon villain audacity with its sinewy sneak boy physique. And that unmistakable Meg's helmet on the horrible toxic melty face gives it a real Skeletor vibe. Like it's such a cohesive croco criminal with killer consistent theming. Check out the Sarkasuka Seeker stomach and the scaled texture that maintains throughout. And you gotta respect how it styles out its flaws. Like the extremely obvious toes on his wrists and legs on his legs. Like a green little hand foot man. And mate, what a croc! God, it feels so weird using that phrase sincerely. There he goes. Ah! <laughs> this precocious Predacon has such palpable shithead energy. Like, for a reptile, why does it seem like such an asshole? Definitely dominates the mouth battle and all. Primal ain't got a chance against that supercharged snap gob. Anyway, weaponage is somewhat less subtle here. Like, I do enjoy how the whole tail pops and swishes into a leathery laser gun, but it just kind of stashes awkwardly on this whole ass lacrosse stick jutting out his nape. But this is defo doing it for me, babes. Because as the villain of the piece, it's already a cracker. But knowing that Megatron was revised gives this toy a really appealing, unrefined energy. Like a larval form starter Pokemon from before he evolved into the T-Rex. And as a duo, he and Primal positively sing with the authentic emergent vibe of a version 0.5. And forgive me for saying this, but I think I prefer this version to the Dino Megs. Like, it took me a really long time to warm up to that asymmetrical head hand freak machine out here looking like Godric the Grafted. So had I been aware of this one man croc party at the time, I think I might have been more open to it. It's a cleaner and much more immediately inviting design and just as much fun. Hungry Megatron. Right then, let's round up the rest of these rascals beginning with the now infamous Man in Pig. <laughs> yes mate, let's raise a glass to Razor Beast who wields the curious honour of being the only Transformer to be named on screen by Will Smith. Transformers! I've been looking for Razor Beast since like October! Now this sunburnt sucker somehow combines the frowned upon twin disciplines of shell forming and flip changing and makes it work. Check out this porcine punk looking rowdy as hell in his crimson pork rind with this preposterous pompadour pistol and exploded back mounted kibble carcass plus a surprisingly excellent and extremely Transformers-y head sculpt. I love that so much man. It's like he's wearing his his lineage proudly, like an echo of Snarler or something. And this tail-triggered transformation just swallows the bot wholesale into a cocoon of crusty corpulence. God, I love how this feral filth pig just pulsates with Pumba charm, as it would being a young warthog. All tusks and trotters and visible hair trigger temper. Like, I wanna be like, oh, hello, piggy, but you know he's just fixing to gore your asshole out. <laughs> Speaking of claimage to fainage, <laughs> Let's get all comfy and mainstream with bona fide Beast Wars royalty, Rat Trap. So full disclosure, this rodenty rat bag is in fact a reissue from like a year and a bit ago, which honestly just speaks to the enduring appeal of characters like Rat Trap and Cheetor and retracts. And it's very weird to me that this toy made it into the main cast of the actual show in this form. Because for me, these work so well as a miniature offshoot of the Beast Wars brand that it's bizarre to me that a couple of them crossed over into the actual program. They let you on telly? Really? Alright. But I think I get why Rizzo the Rat Trap made it. He just instantly looks like the quintessential shit-talking scamp with a heart of gold. Doesn't it just translate perfectly? Check out his simplistic mammalian lines. Sharp, shiny shin guards and endearing fuzzball feet, and that wild robot head with eyes of albino red, zigzag nibble gob, and like scaly metal brain helmet. I don't know. Weapons a little bit less interesting and less well integrated on this lad. Simply a boring brown blaster that bifurcates into two chunks that tucks snugly enough into his exploded varmint cape. Never gets old watching him disappear into his other self. And this rodent modent is like so almost cute. I love the 
good tumpy hump back here, but the feet are so long and pink and naked and almost humanoid that it gives me the jibblies. And I don't know what's going on with his mouth, with the kind of ninja turtle scowl that looks so wrong on a rodenty snout. You're having a raff, ain't ya? But yeah, it's not hard to see why Rat Trap made it into the show. The charm offensive is very powerful here, which is much more than I can say for Pterosaur. <laughs> also made the leap from cheap and cheerful flip changer to full time small screen starlet and he's not even good. This is easily the weakest of the bunch for me. I can see why people like it, I suppose. The robot's got a neat helmet and the colours are swish. And who doesn't love a pterodactyl? Don. Trinkus. Coatlas. Oh, pterosaur. Do you get it? Come on. The flinosaur's got the feet all stuffed up under its chin. The shite laser gun just rattles around inside the bum end like a post box. The robot barely stands. The chest is made of cloaca. Like, that's your guy? This, in the main show, with the proper ones? <laughs> Terrible. Just gonna flash up uh, Beast Wars Neo Hydra here, cause I've got him. He's purple. Whatever. <laughs> Anyway, back to the good ones with Iguanus, who sadly is kind of redundant when Megatron's in town, because it's basically the same toy but with a more boring animal mode and the colours of Pooh and Wee. Ooh, I don't remember having sweet corn. Guess we could use him as a chance to show off the posing, which is broadly the same across the squad. That is to say, extremely flexible but kind of weak. They can do a lot of poses, but they won't stand in them. Like these trademark slim limbs, slims, are remarkably satisfying to handle, with super tight three mil handholds and impressively effective micro ball joints, but like not a lot of strength on the go. Chad's in the hand, melts on the land. I am a little bit in love with the lizard mode though. Look at that smile. He is thrilled to be here. Oh shut up. And with that, let's peek. Let's hear an enamadillo for armadillo. Armadillo? Like an armadillo, but with armor? So like an armadillo? That's the dumbest shit ever, I'm so happy. <laughs> now you'll know I love a chunkster, and this knobbly knobhead is as dumb as they come. Rocking up with a whole soup bowl on his back and his tail curving up like a coat hook. Why is he looking at me like that? What's with the gormless grin and the iron hidey dome helmet? Hang about, iron hide, armor hide, Armadillo. There you go. I've decided they're related. That's canon now. And the weapons are just unhinged. Like, he's got a gun and a flail with feet on them, and they're on the backs of his hands that are feet that are claws. Bro is such a mess, and I'm very invested. Flip change moment is as clean as it gets, notwithstanding a slightly awkward weapons as feet moment. Honestly, some of my favourite shit. And the big Dillo Pads Animode is certainly a clumsy customer, with its enormous roundy wrinkle rump and oddly small rat-like nibble noggin. But doesn't it just become its wonderfully regal pose? Forearms outstretched luxuriantly like a mighty sphinx. Or like Angurus, pretending there's definitely not a bloke in here, honest. Side note, this toy's had two repaints, as a Beast Wars Neo Bump and Robot Master's Psycho Orb. So it's never had a name that wasn't brilliant. <laughs> And let's shut it down with the show-stopping shell shock of Snapper! Who, by virtue of Beast Wars' almost offensive, deterministic, speciesist pigeonholing, has found himself on the Predacon team. The evil reptile and insect forces of the Predacons. But there's no way you're telling me this is a bad guy. He is so cute. Tell me you ain't charmed by his hopeless flappy limbs, like a puppy that ain't grown into his legs yet. The weird chibi face with de facto amphibi grin. The little flick of the turtle tail tum. How is he not your fave? And oh my god, wait till you see this spectacular shooter storage. It's probably the best I've seen on any toy, ever. It just folds up and stealths into his shell, and it's gone. For real, I got this guy loose, and I didn't realise that I had his gun, or that he had a gun, for ten years. It was just on him the entire time. Straight up bamboozled. That is a phenomenal bit of work. It's the essence of Transformers. Even if it does mean that his gun's just a bit of shell with a plastic barrel on it. Shove it in my shell, daddy. Oh god, I love this thing. I love how his alt mode head pokes out of the shell a little bit when he turtle morphs. Oh, hello. <laughs> 
Space mode is pure cowabungasm. It's a grand handful, just a solid little grenade of a thing. The shell's wonderful, all dense and polished and ridgy. It's friggin' Andrew ridgy. And the quality of the central bod makes it such gleeful whiplash that the legs are so terrible. All four of them, all day long, dumb as rocks. I think the front ones are trying to maintain some kind of illusion that they're connected somehow, and the back ones are just out there trailing behind him like tentacles. It's straight lunacy, and it's kind of why this lot worked for me. Do you get what I mean? That they sort of seem like a self-contained subline, almost separate from Beast Wars itself? They're like the rock lords of Transformers. It's like a microcosm with its own distinct energy and clear creature themes for the two factions. It's got its own Optimus and Megatron and a thematically appropriate supporting cast. And while they all do the same thing, they all have their own distinct personality and embody it with their whole chest and anus. So cheers for watching, big thanks to Brentosaur and to Llama God for making this episode possible. Thanks again to Magic Spoon, don't forget to click the old link down there. And until next time, keep it basic! <laughs>Look at that, the first review in the new digs, fancy that. Just for watching everybody, thanks for everybody who tuned into PulseCon as well. That was such a blast. Had a great old time there, glad it went over okay. And big thanks of course to everybody on Patreon who facilitates my shenanigans, especially this time, the mightiest sandwich. Sounds delicious. Check you later gang. Be sure to subscribe for more Theo's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.